The much-loved and highly feared William Augustus Moore, former leader of the Black Roses crew, was believed to have been an underworld kingpin, who, because of his nature as a young man, was given the nickname Willie Agart. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Moore was born on the 14th of March, 1961. He was the third child for his parents and attended the Jonestown Primary School. As a teenager, he became a member of Anthony Tingle's, more popularly known as General Starkey's Wild Bunch Gang. According to reports, he later linked up with Skengdon and the wider Spangler's Posse overseas after Tingle was murdered in 1981. Moore moved back to Jamaica in 1993, where he and his then common law wife, Angela Lickamis Moore, got married on the 18th of December 1993. The union produced two children. Willie is said to have acknowledged 18 kids while he was still alive. However, since his death, more have come forward claiming that he is their father, potentially putting the figure over 20. Around the early 1990s, he was invited by dancer Gerald Levy, more popularly known as Bogle, to join his dance group named The Roses Crew, which made Moore very popular within the dancehall community, locally and internationally. Bogle was full of style and Willie Agard had the cash, which was on show at entertainment events all around the country. The famous Willie Bounce dance, done by dancehall entertainer Elephant Man, immortalized Willie Agard as it was created in his name and honor. The crew or gang, as some are unable to make a distinction, activities cut across multiple stages, including dancehall, fashion and lavish displays. There are suggestions that their forays across the dancehall stage remained secondary to their identification as a hardcore inner city crew, headed by Willie, with reputed links to the narco culture and gun culture that formed a part of Kingston inner city activity. On the afternoon of April 18, 2001, he and two friends from the Black Roses crew, Ned Eins, otherwise called Big Bunny, and Albert Bonner, otherwise called Black a Douche, were sitting talking outside a grocery store he owned in the Lincoln Crescent section of Kingston, when a Toyota Corolla pulled up and three men who were dressed as police officers alighted and opened gunfire, hitting them. Willie Agart reportedly tried crawling away, but one of the gunmen followed, then stood over him and emptied an entire magazine into his body. He was reportedly shot 19 times. All three men died on the spot, but the fallout from the Don's death went beyond the hail of gunshots that extinguished his life as there was the fear of reprisal killings. Somebody got dead for Willie's death. Learn that. What me say? You can quote me upon that one day. A member of the Black Roses crew vowed, punctuating each sentence by jabbing a reporter in the chest. Willie was a godfather to the youths in the area. He helped to send lots of kids to school. He had businesses. He employed youths from the area. And he was involved in contract work, which helped enough unemployed men to get jobs. No, nobody don't know how things can turn, one man said at the time. Interestingly, others were less fond of him. A resident in another area of Arnett Gardens shut down the warm and fuzzy image claiming that Agart earned a reputation as a man with a mean streak who was quick to violence. She hinted at a two-facedness on the part of some residents who pretended public grief to hide personal relief. Willie wasn't well loved by everyone, but people can't talk it, the woman told reporters. To be truthful, he helped some people on his ends and he had annual treats for the kids. But he was a show-off and bossy. Him did moody and him disrespected a lot of people. You never know when he would have just boxed down somebody. His funeral was very controversial as several members of the then PJ Patterson-led government 
were among the estimated 5,000 who showed up at the National Arena to pay their last respects to the community leader. Among them were Finance Minister and Member of Parliament for South St. Andrew, Dr. Omar Davies, Minister of Water and Housing, Dr. Carl Blight, and then Minister of Transport and Works, Dr. Peter Phillips. Paul Burke, the then Chairman of the People's National Party Region 3, also attended, as did East Kingston businessman Dania Williams, Kenneth Skengdon Black, and Beaniman. The National Arena was converted into a colorful shrine of orange and white balloons and for about three and a half hours, the entire stretch of road from the intersection of Artwin Drive and Statue Road down to the gates of the National Arena was blocked by thousands. Those who had been waiting anxiously to get a last glimpse of the body finally got their wish about 11.50 am when the black Mercedes-Benz pulled up outside the gates of the arena. Inside, balloons were used to form an arch over an aisle along which mourners were required to walk to view the body or go to their seats. The 20-gauge steel casket, complete with wing bars and decorated with a replica of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, was boxed in by four iron rails near the platform from which Roman Catholic priest Reverend Kenneth Mockien conducted the service. The emotion charged atmosphere was made more sad as a sound system on stage played what were said to be some of Moore's favorite gospel songs. The tears contrasted sharply with the loud cheers which erupted when businessman Skengdon arrived surrounded by a large private security entourage. The casket was immediately reopened to allow Black, said to be one of Moore's close friends, to view the body. But the spectacle of a slain Don, being feted by government dignitaries in the arena, usually reserved for state funerals, provoked outrage among civic activists. In his tribute to Moore, Omar Davis responded to critics of his being at the funeral service, saying, I am here to pay my last respect to a man I met seven and a half years ago when I came to represent the constituency of South St. Andrew. He assisted me to achieve some of my objectives in the constituency. We never had a meeting which lasted more than 10 minutes, said Davis. Dancer Gerald Bogle Levy, who said he was the one who had invited Haggard to be a part of the Black Roses crew shed tears at the funeral and made it clear that the Don had people he could trust. Willie was my friend. He looked out for the community. I loved Willie for Willie. And even though other people caused friction between us, I was his true friend. I still can't believe this Guan, he said. Later on the wailing sirens, the funeral procession was escorted from the National Arena by about four police outriders into his home community of Arnett Gardens onto the Black Roses Corner on Lincoln Crescent and Russell Road. His body was interred at the Calvary Cemetery. Agart, despite his reputation, had a fairly clean police record despite being convicted on the 11th of November 1980 in the halfway tree court for unlawful possession of ganja and a fine $50. Police records also show that on the 30th of November 1993, he was again convicted for possession of marijuana and was fined $100 or 30 days in prison. In 1995, he was charged with robbery with aggravation. However, that case was later dismissed. The infamous leader of the Black Roses crew, according to online sources, disguised a drug empire behind the dance crew where he controlled an estimated 30% of all illegal drugs flowing through the Caribbean. The murder of Willie Haggard launched an unprecedented rush of shootings, believed to be in reprisal for his death, where an estimated 25 people were killed shortly after he was murdered.
teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.